Good afternoon. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. I am humbled by this moment. Here I stand before you at this, at this esteemed university, attempting to share with you what my friend, my mentor, my boss, and my hero would say to the graduating class of 2021. This is really surreal, and I feel the energy of his life and example with us today. I hope you do too. So what would John Robert Lewis say? John Lewis, the son of a sharecropper, husband, father, family man, disciple of Martin Luther King Jr., one of the big, big six civil rights leaders, congressman of 35 years, recipient of the, of the Lincoln Medal, the Golden Plate Award, the National Trust for Historic Preservation's Preservation Hero Award, the Martin Luther King Jr. Nonviolent Peace Prize, the NAACP's highest award, the Spingarn Medal, the John F. Kennedy Profile and Courage Award for his lifetime achievements, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor. John Lewis, the best-selling author of several books, including the comic book series, March, and an amazing autobiography, Walking with the Wind. A freedom rider who was on the first bus heading south to integrate interstate transportation facilities 60 years ago, almost to the day. May 4th was the 60th anniversary of that freedom ride. He was a keynote speaker at the historic 1963 March on Washington, a staunch and unwavering believer and advocate of nonviolent protest, the recipient of over 50 honorary degrees, the man Time Magazine once called a saint, the man his colleagues in Congress called the conscience of Congress, and just an all around good troublemaker he was. What would a man of these extraordinary accomplishments have to say to the graduates of the University of North Carolina, Asheville today? Well, the first thing John would say is, I extend a special congratulation to all the parents, family, friends, faculty, and all others who supported the graduates of the class of 2021. He would say, thank you for your sacrifice, your money, your prayers, your tears, your kind words of encouragement, and all manner of support that you provided to the graduates, which contributed to their success today. Success which was achieved, by the way, in the midst of a pandemic. You know who you are. Take a bow, celebrate, exhale. You've done good work. Graduates of the class of 2021, please join me in a round of applause for everyone who helped you become a graduate here today. So that is the first thing John Lewis would say on this occasion, because John Lewis was a very observant and gracious man. He knew about sacrifice and he always gave credit when and where it was due. Before I share the rest of John's message to our graduates, let me briefly tell you how I know John or knew John. I first met him when I was a junior in, I was not a junior in high school, I was in junior high school. He was one of the many civil rights leaders who regularly visited our small church in Washington, D.C. It's there that I also met Martin Luther King Jr., Jesse Jackson, Bayard Rustin, Stokely Carmichael, and James Farmer. John and the other leaders would spend quality time with us over lemonade in the fellowship hall at church. Why? Because they knew how important it is to invest in young people. Fast forward about 12 years to 1979, in Atlanta, Georgia, I met and got to know John's wife, Lillian. She reintroduced me to John. 
I worked in John's campaign for Atlanta City Council. He cared about the things that I cared about, including neighborhood preservation and ethics. I also worked in his campaign for Congress in 1986, putting up yard signs, licking envelopes, and hosting events for other young professionals to get to know him. The year after he was elected to Congress, we relocated to Washington and I called him. I wanted to come by and see his new office on the Hill. I got there and he asked me if I wanted to be his administrative assistant. Now I have a couple of law degrees and by that time had been a law professor for a few years. And I figured that an administrative assistant was an admin, sort of the office task master the person who kept the notes, a scheduler. But I told John that I would take the job so long as I could help him change the world. It may be hard for you to believe this, but I did not know until I showed up for work a couple of weeks later that the administrative assistant to a member of Congress is the chief of staff. I just wanted to come in and help John change the world in any way that I could. I did two stints as Chief of Staff, 10 glorious years of witnessing firsthand the impact of the most honest, hardworking, unassuming, always optimistic, focused, energetic, and kind human being imaginable. He is, he was, truly one in a billion. Now that's the man who is being honored here with you today. I hope you feel his presence, his power, his energy. I hope you know he's with you as you celebrate your graduation today. Toward the end of his life, John asked that I establish the John and Lillian Miles Lewis Foundation. And I asked him, well, what do you want us to do? He said simply, continue my work Make sure the story gets told and inspire good trouble. You'll know what to do, Linda. So what I did was reach back to the lessons I had learned from him over the course of our more than 35 year friendship. These are important lessons, lessons he would want me to share with you today. Have faith, be confident, be patient, be thorough, do your research, don't just show up, show up ready. Have both a passion and a strategy for what you do. Be creative, be nimble, pace yourself. Give yourself permission to make mistakes. Mistakes are just the things that you learn from. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Devote yourself as much to the planning as to the doing. Stay focused. Don't give up, or as he would put it, never ever give up. Do what you know is just and right. Get in a little good trouble. And so that brings me to the message that John would have me share with the graduates today. What he would say if he were here with us other than in spirit, and he is here with us in spirit. First, and please listen to me on this, America is the greatest country on earth. Be proud of her. She's not perfect, but she is perfectly imperfect. Her work will never be complete. There will always be more to do. Work hard to protect her. She is worthy of your best efforts in all matters, big and small. John Lewis would go on to talk about America's potential and your important role in forging ahead toward a more perfect union. You know from all that you've heard and read that John Lewis was willing to die for America's unrealized potential something you don't read or hear about often. But John Lewis was beaten, bloodied, spit upon, insulted, condemned, and even misunderstood
for his contributions to the American ideals. But he was very proud, and he na never gave in to despair. Not on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, not in the more than 40 jail cells where he was held, not on the back roads and byways he traveled to register people to vote, not in the halls of Congress, not in the cotton fields in Pike County, Alabama, where he grew up. He never regretted what he did to advance the human condition of this great country. And he would say to you that you should never, ever stop working on behalf of this great country either. Don't stop believing in America, ever. And know that you can make a difference. You can make America better. All you have to do, he would say, is go on and get into a little bit of good trouble, necessary trouble. John Lewis was a special man, a great man, always wanting to teach and inspire particularly young people. He did something special, something that only a great man would do. He left a message for us and asked that it be published following his passing last year. Some of you may have seen it in the New York Times in July of last year. I'm going to end with a part of it. In his message, he said in part, though I may not be here with you, I urge you to answer the highest calling of your heart and stand up for what you truly believe. In my life, I have done all I can to demonstrate that the way of peace, the way of love, the way of nonviolence is the more excellent way. Now it is your turn to let freedom ring. Thank you.